Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway. Today I'm coming at you with your model train requests. So I'm not taking any new requests today. If you'd like to submit one, you will be able to do that on my next series of Sam's Trains Live. But all the trains I'm going to be running today were requests from the last series of Sam's Trains Live. So thank you everybody for those. Some awesome stuff coming up, so I hope you enjoy them. I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to all of my requesters and also everybody that watches the channel. Even if you've never sent a super chat or become a member in your life, you just being here to watch the videos means so much and you really do just uh, make this whole channel possible. So thank you so much. Also, if you are a member or if you super chat on a regular basis, obviously I owe so much more to you guys. Thank you so, so much. You make the whole channel possible. You mean that this channel can stay alive and you mean that I can continue to do this for a living, which I absolutely love. So thank you so much to you. Obviously though, if you don't become a member or if you don't super chat, totally, totally fine. These videos will always be free for you to watch. Anyway, today, lots of cool trains. I've got some lovely locos, some crazy consists, and of course, some lousy lemons to run. So let's get cracking. Here they come. So speaking of lemons, we're actually going to be starting off with some of the worst wagons I have ever bought for this channel. But then again, where would the Sam's Trains request service be without them? It is, of course, a William Babcock request to see two fast pocket rocket locos, HST style, with all seven egg vans in between. What a bad feeling I've got about that. On the middle line, there's a slightly more normal request that I'm hoping won't derail, although it still could. It comes from Davis Harrigan, who wanted to see any class 66 a container and hopper train mix because he loves these consists and also he said he bought a merchant navy thanks to my review so that's awesome hope you enjoy that i do apologize for the slightly eclectic mix of hoppers and um, containers because i don't really collect those things very much so yeah not a great selection but hopefully it's okay and then we've got a mayo hosco request on the inside line who wanted to see br green mallard double heading with an 08 shunter might be a problem that because my br green Mallard's very fast and my OH Hunter is very slow. I have a feeling that Mayo is a masochist at heart and he knew this. Uh, but I probably won't do that one for too long because I don't want to burn out my A4. And then he also wanted to see some of the BP and black shell tankers and some green open trucks as well as an LNER brake. Don't have that many black tankers so I've supplemented it with a few extras. Anyway, enough waffling, let's get some of this stuff running. Uh, let's, leave, <laughs> let's leave the O4Os until last. Let's see if this eclectic mix of hoppers and containers will work. Hopefully it will. And we'll do just one or so laps with this double header. Ooh, not too good that. And then, because William wanted these fast, let's do a fast lap. Probably going to be over pretty soon. Oh no, amazing. Blimey. Apologies for the bad camera work here. All right, lap two is going to commence. Wow. Okay, well, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead on that. <laughs> that did happen last time I did this, actually, at speed. They do seem to get away with it somehow. I think last time, after a few laps, it did all go wrong and there was a pile-up, so I'm going to definitely quit while I'm ahead. But, yeah, we'll give those a rest and let's check in with the other requests. I was quite worried about this one because it really is quite a mixture and they've all got different couplings and different wheels and such, so... You know, there's no telling, but it actually seems okay. So hopefully that's all right for you, Davis. Still pretty nice to see something modern run, even though the rolling stock isn't terribly modern. Yeah, very, very impressed that all of those Roberts and such hoppers stayed on the track, and the Coca-Cola um, container wagon as well. That's usually a problem. Absolutely fine today. Oh, that's jolly good. Yeah, and the A4 is definitely not happy. Oh, maybe it is an happy now, I don't know. Yeah, it's a DCC fitted loco and it doesn't work very well on analog, unfortunately, as you can probably tell. Oh, blimey, look at that. Yeah, that A4 is making that 08 go the fastest it's ever gone in its entire life, I think. 
Let's move on to the next round then, which has got it all really. It's got some cool ideas, some classic locos, and a good old-fashioned race as well. So let's start off with the outside line. This comes from Mega Train Lover. Very simply wanted to see the Great Western King class with some Great Western coaches, which I have set up. And this is a great idea. I loved this one when it came in. It comes from Alpha008, who wanted to see three diesels in order of class. So I wanted to do 24, 25, 26, but of course my class 24 is DCC sound fitted and it doesn't work on analog despite Backman's claims. So I've gone with a class 20, a class 25 and a class 26. So they're still in order, although not consecutive, unfortunately. And then on the inside line, this comes from Vladimir12, who wanted to see the LNER A4 versus the Coronation. So I've put the A4 at the front here and the Coronation at the back. The A4 should be the world's fastest steam locomotive really it's mallard so if i put them up to full power hopefully mallard will run away from the coronation which will never catch it uh, if not then we might be changing history anyway let's start the king class here we go a little bit of a clink there from the front bogey but i think it's okay there it goes dodgy motor on that one but it should speed up and recover and then we've got the consecutive well they're not consecutive numerically ordered diesels and there are three of them, of course, so they draw quite a bit of power, so I need to turn it up a little bit more. And now, for the ultimate challenge, can the A4 hold on to its title? Will this small video about model trains change history forever? No, of course it won't, but I'm going to do it anyway. Here we go, let's try. Oh my gosh, well it's over already. Coronation has caught up with Mallard and proceeded to derail it by the sounds of things. That is not good. I'm gonna have to stop it straight away. Well, I'm sorry that that was so brief, but it turns out the Coronation is much faster than the A4. And yeah, it was uh, about to derail the A4's tender. So yep, they'll uh, have to be left there to recover and I'll show you some of the other lovely requests. So here's the lovely King class taking quite a leisurely stroll with its great Western coaches, uh, obviously. Not up to its usual King Class speed today. <laughs> Could turn it up a little bit, but it's quite nice to admire it at slower speed for a change, I think. So that's a good one. Thank you very much for that request. And there we have the triple header working pretty well. Again, not flying along. Uh, I wish I had an Ami to hooked up to my controller so I could know <laughs> how much power they're drawing. But they are running slower than usual, which suggests they are hitting some sort of limit. So up next, we're starting off with a real classic combo from Lapis Wake, who wanted to see the Class 71 and the Metropolitan Bobo double heading. So you've got two classic electric locos there. Um, Lapis wanted to see Pullmans with those and also some of the four or six wheeled coaches on the back. So I've popped those on as well. That's very nice. Then on the middle line, here's a really lovely idea from Vlad Capetti, who wanted to see a rail tour, classic uh, sort of modern rail tour with the Backman Hall class, seven chocolate and cream coaches and then to help things along as they do in real life a class 25 at the back so thank you vlad for that and then on the inside line we have a very simple one from peb productions who wanted to see our lord and savior johnson 1p running light without any rolling stock now this does seem like a strange idea but i totally get it this is such a beautiful loco there is nothing wrong with just worshipping it on its own without any rolling stock to distract the eye. So let's get these started. Let's begin with the two electrics. Uh, the Helgen one is awful, obviously, because it's Helgen, and so it's very inconsistent in its running. Hopefully that won't cause any problems, though, even though it probably will. And then we've got the Rail Tour, two Backman Locos here, the Hall and the 25. I think the 25 is a bit faster than the Hall because uh, it's got a decent mechanism in it, you know, that little thing. Uh, so it is going to be pushing the haul along a little bit. So again, that's a, a possible candidate for derailment, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. And then the Johnson 1P, which is, uh, as Peb said, perfect in every way, so it shouldn't have any issues. Oh dear, look at this. Yeah, and it is the Helgen that's responsible for the uh, rough movement. Because on its own, the Hornby 71 is very, very smooth indeed. I'd look at that, that's crazy. Good looking locos though, that's the main thing. <laughs> and they do actually seem to be staying on the track too, so 
you know what, it's not ideal, but I will take it. And the passengers probably wouldn't see it that way, but never mind. Of course, even though these are two electric locos, they are very different, as you can see. Uh, so this is probably one of those cases where you can only do this in model form. It's, I'd be very surprised if this happened in real life. Although, if you are aware of this happening through the years, do comment down below and let me know. This is definitely a more feasible one, though, with the hall and the rail tour. Um, oh, just lift up for the Johnson. <laughs> it might even be based on a real scenario. It could be, but it's, it's definitely more likely to happen, isn't it? And everything looks so good together, doesn't it? The uh, Great Western or BR Green Loco with the chocolate and cream coaches. Yeah, it's just a really lovely combination. Let's wait for that 25. There it is, and here comes the Johnson. Whoa. <laughs> nice. And of course, old Mother Johnson needs no introduction. It's just gorgeous. It's only a pity that it's not hauling anything because uh, it's just so good at hauling stuff. It's one of those locos that does not care. Its wheels don't slow down if you put something behind it. It's pretty good. And once again, 100 years bad luck to Helgen for their cursed couplings. Right, let's move on then. I'll be right back in just a second with some more awesome requests for you. Okay, we are back with more fantastic requests. Thank you so much for these folks. They've been awesome already. So on the outside line, we have another one here from William Babcock. It's a surprisingly normal one. Uh, he just wanted to see the Backman A1, did specify Backman and not Hornby, so that's a nice change, uh, with the Pullman coaches, which we've already got on, so that's pretty good. Then we have a really lovely request from the Duke of Awesome, who wanted to see the J70 Always a pleasure to run the J70, it's a great loco. With some open wagons and a brake of my choice at the back, so we've gone with the LNER brake, of course, that makes the most sense to me. And then, here's another minimalist request, and I've really been enjoying these today, actually. This one comes from Maryland Midland Productions, who wanted to see the Peckett backwards, did specify backwards, with two small wagons. So I've chosen two of the smallest wagons I've got. That's a Backman one planker, or is it a two? Yeah, one plank, I think. And then a very, very short Hornby four or five plank wagon. Okay, let's get these started then. So the Backman A1, <laughs> not too good. I think the uh, rear pony truck might not be on the track properly, but it is now. So let's try again. There we go. Minor hiccup there. Nobody saw it. It's okay. And then we've got the J70, which I always need to run a bit slower because it's so quick. And then we've got the Peckett, which is also just an amazing little loco. There we go. All right, let's enjoy these. So there you have it, the Backman A1. Good looking locos, possibly better looking than Hornby's A1s. But mechanically, they're not very good. They're not the greatest runners and the mechanisms are quite low quality, which is a shame. But as you can see, this one is working okay. So no problems at all there. Yeah, thundering along with those Pullmans. Looks really good, that. And then we're going to wait for the next loco right here. There it is, J70. Still a good run of that one, very nice. With its open wagons. Who else is excited for Rapido's new uh, British locos? I certainly am. If they're like this, they ought to be something pretty special. And not forgetting, of course, the almighty Hornby Peckett. Just hauling two wagons at the moment, as per the request, but as we know, it can haul an awful lot more. Very good locos, those. And great looking as well. See how smooth it is, too. O4Os can be a bit dodgy sometimes, because they've only got a couple of contacts with the track, but not really these. They're great. Slightly terrifying moment there, as it's being chased by a massive Backman A1. Good job they're on different tracks. Well, it wouldn't be a really proper requests video if there wasn't a Thomas and Friends request in here. So we do have the Backman Henry running today for Shine Ortis, who wanted the Backman Henry 
hauling some Pullmans. So the Pullmans have done pretty well today, but this is going to be their last run. So everyone say goodbye to the Pullmans after this. And then we have, a, this is an interesting one that got me thinking, from Rory Stevens, who wanted to see my favourite diesel double heading with my least favourite steam locomotive. So eventually I decided on the Backman Peak as my favourite diesel and then the Helgen 02 Tango as my least favourite steam locomotive. That is the original lemon, if you like. And then you might be wondering, oh dear, have, have we finished? Is there no request for the inside line? Well, no, that's not the case at all. Here is the request from the inside line. You might wonder what the devil is going on. So, Jane London wanted to see the 9F with the Stevenson's Rocket Coaches and the Queen Mary Brake Van. Now, obviously, the Stevenson's Rocket Coaches by Hornby have a sort of proprietary coupling to them, which means I can't actually couple them up to the 9F. So, I'm going to attempt the world's shortest model railway journey just uh, along this straight here with the 9F pushing them along. It actually looks like some sort of coach torturing experiment, doesn't it? With the uh, big Queen Mary and the 9F crushing the coaches between them. Them. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that pleasant thought. Let's have the Backman Henry with his Pullmans. There we go. And let's have the Peak and the Tango. Ooh, probably not a great idea that with some teaks. And then let's start this very, very short journey with the 9F. Okay, well, I'm going to have to take this very, very easy indeed, but here we go. Slowly, please, 9F. Oh, stopped on the points. That's uh, scuppered that then, hasn't it? <laughs> Maybe it's too slow, I don't know. And I can hear the Helgen derailing, but we'll go and look at that in a minute. Of course, I know it's the Helgen. Okay, and then we'll stop it here because they don't really do curves, as you can see. Uh, because buffer lock. So hopefully that was okay, Jane London. Very, very short journey, only a minor accident at the end. Uh, let's go and catch up with the other locos, see what went wrong with the Helgen. Anybody surprised? No, no, I'm not surprised. Okay, well, I'll come back to those in just a second. The power's off, let's film Henry first. All right, good old Henry, look at that. Never a problem with old Henry. Hauling quite a good number of coaches. I think he'd be pretty proud of himself for that. Here he comes, he's going to go past the wreck of the old 90 Helgen. Trying not to snigger as he does. They gave him his horn. Right, let's go and put the Tango back on the track and see if we can get at least some running out of it for you. Oh dear. <laughs> I've just gone to lift up the front pony or whatever and I found that. <laughs> that could be serious. No, unfortunately, I think the Tango will live on. It's nothing too serious. It's just because, you know, Helgen's locos are so cheap and nastily made. There's actually nothing holding the front pony onto this loco. It just sort of gets shoved into a groove here on the front pony assembly. Uh, so if I just pop it back in, yeah, there we go. Again, it's just cheap, nasty construction. In fact, I do need the spacer on the other side, though. Damn, I thought, you know, Mazak Rot had struck and I'd be able to finally scrap the Tango, but no, it's, it looks all right. Come on, let's have a run. Okay, life has been restored, regrettably. Lives to see another day. Never mind, at least I could do the request. <laughs> when it dies, if it dies, I want to catch it on camera. I don't want it happening in secret. So perhaps it's a good thing overall. All right, let's see if we can catch it on camera doing that again sort of breaking free of its front pony wheels. That's a new behavior characteristic. I've never seen that before. Oh, well, nothing would surprise me. No, I think it's okay. It's always the same. You turn the camera on, stuff starts behaving. Unless it's one of the days where nothing behaves on camera. That can be annoying too. Anyway, let's quit while we're ahead. Still more requests to come, stay tuned. They're coming at you right now. So here's the next round, all set up, ready to go. The next one comes from Marcus YouTube Gaming Ear, which is a cool username, uh, who wanted to see the E2 with the four-wheel coaches. Now, confession time, I've actually lost the original E2 face. Well, I, would, I don't like to say lost, but I, I've misplaced it and I don't currently know its whereabouts. So it is stuck with the Thomas face, unfortunately. Uh, I might have to make a new face for it in the end if I can't find it, but uh, yeah, I do keep looking. Uh, but anyway, Yep, yeah, that's that. It is still technically the E2. 
Then we have a request from E350TB. Thank you very much for the wool winder in the lovely gloss with teak coaches. So those are the teaks, of course. And then on the inside line, this is funny because we were talking about uh, sort of rail cars hauling freight and such. And before we talked about that in the Helgen rail car review, Jack Ford requested the Hornby Railroad 122, I guess he means 121, with some mixed freight. So it's got a few box vans and a few wagons at the back. Okay, so E2 slash Thomas, here we go, with the little four wheelers. Then we've got the wool winder. We are carefully hauling teaks, and because Hornby's 121 actually has traction tyres on it, it can haul quite a bit. So, yeah, I've never done this before, but here it goes. Yep, seems to be managing just fine. All right, let's hope for no derailments this time. There we go. And it is so cool that we've got coaches like this to use nowadays, uh, particularly when the Hatton's ones come out as well, because... All these locos can be just brought to life with the proper coaches, can't they? And Thomas definitely seems to be enjoying the experience, riding alongside the rail car there. <laughs> He's got a big smile on his face. Here we go, lovely wool winder with the Marmite gloss. Uh, these days I quite like it. I can understand people that don't, but yeah, take it or leave it for me, it's all right. Come on though, you can't deny this does look great, particularly with the teaks. Yes. What a sight. And I'm pretty sure this is a first for me as well. I don't think I've tried to couple much to the 121 before, even though it's got couplings pre-fitted to it. But as you can see, it's almost as though it was designed to haul quite a lot, because it can. It can very, really quite easily. Lovely. Right, well, there's one round left. So there goes Thomas. And let's go and set it up. Okay, the final round is set up and ready to go. This has been a lot of fun today and we're going out with a bit of a bang. So on the outside line, we're putting the pre-grouping coaches to good use again because Charlie Flockhart wanted to see an Atlantic, so I've gone with the H1, hauling yet again the pre-grouping coaches. So that's a gorgeous combo. Have done that before, I think, but it's a pleasure to do so. So that's awesome. Then we have our Spike 462 who wanted to see the Flying Scotsman and the GT3 with a mixture of LNER teak and clerestory coaches behind there so that's what I've set up and then we have Daniel Pulley who wanted to see Tangmere with a long rake of box vans uh, because he lives near the village of Tangmere I think he said uh, it's uh, kind of next door so let's get these started then the last round of requests all going the same direction just for the last little run so here we go with the H1 the Scotsman and the GT3 Interesting pairing that, like that. And of course, Tangmere with Tangmere's box vans. Awesome, thank you very much folks. It's been a blast. And there goes those uh, clerestory coaches. All right, let's see if that uh, finicky GT3 bogey has caused any trouble. Can't tell. Maybe it hasn't come off. <laughs> Probably should have put that at the front thinking about it but it's too late now because it's gone under the bookcase. Let's see how it comes out. Well, it has come out, so <laughs> that's the first good sign. Yeah, I think we might get away with that. Very nice. Phew. All right, we'll be able to see now whether it's on yet. Looks to be. Oh, good. Well, look at that. That's what I call a head of steam right there. Crikey. Yeah, very lively run of that one. It goes perfect with those coaches too. I wish I had a few more of them. But three's good enough. And good old Tangmere with the box vans. Of course, these were officially designed as mixed traffic engines, so you would be forgiven for coupling rolling stock. Although, we all know that Bullied intended them to be passenger locos, so that's what I do most of the time. But no, no complaints coupling up wagons from time to time. Well, folks, that is it for another requests video. So thank you so much for watching. And of course, thank you so much again for your support, whether you are just a subscriber and a viewer, whether you're a member of the channel or whether you send in super chats once in a while for these awesome requests. Whichever you are, I couldn't do this without you. And I'm so grateful that you are always here to watch. So thank you very, very much for that. Thanks again for watching. and I will see you on the next one. All right. Cheers, everybody. Take care.
coming at you with your model train requests. What's all this about? You really do keep this channel alive. Uh, you make it possible for, uh, for me to 